First, inspect the neonate's head. Look for molding, caput, and cephalohematomas. You can see where caput, or edema of the scalp, will cross suture lines. However, as you will notice, cephalohematomas do not cross these lines. The suture lines of the neonate should be slightly open, but it is frequently noted that they are overriding soon after birth. This is due to molding of the head to fit through the birth canal. When inspecting the anterior and posterior fontanelle, you should find that they are soft and flat, without tension or bulging. The palate should be intact. It is good to both palpate and visualize the palate to verify. The palate should also be smooth and concave. Inspect the nares. They must be patent, as the infant will remain a nasal obligate breather for some time. An easy way to assess for patent nares is to place something shiny, such as a mirror or metal instrument, under the nose and look for condensation of warm air exiting on exhalation. Visualize and palpate the neck. It should be supple and without masses. When you are ready to check the eyes of the infant, first open the eyelids and ensure their presence. Confirm that they are clear and without cloudiness or bruising, and the sclera are without jaundice. After assessing the eyes, look at the ears. They should be free from tags and in a line lateral with the eye. Low-set ears may be associated with neurologic or renal impairment. Molding of the head may mask true low-set ears and should be taken into account. A normal full-term infant should assume flexed position and respond to stimulation when examined in an alert state. Neurologic stability in the newborn can be verified and demonstrated by eliciting a number of reflex actions. Let's now take a look at how to elicit neonatal reflexes and what the normal responses should be. The Morrow reflex is elicited by neck flexion, which is then followed by abrupt neck extension. This, in turn, causes extension and abduction of the arms and opening of the hands, then followed by some flexion. This reflex is also referred to as the startle reflex. The blink reflex is most commonly evaluated during assessment of the infant's eyes. As was seen earlier, the neonatal response to having their eyes opened is to close the lids. The Babinski reflex occurs when the neonate's plantar surface of the foot is stroked. What you will notice here is the fanning of the toes. The palmer and plantar grasp are reflexes that are elicited when the evaluator places their finger firmly in the palm of the hand or ball of the foot. As you can see, the normal reflex is curling of the fingers or toes. The step reflex occurs when the infant is held upright under the armpits with their feet placed on a firm surface. The neonate will appear to be stepping this is also referred to as the dance reflex. When the infant is placed in the prone position and has their belly raised up off the table, the infant should make crawling movements with arms and legs. This type of movement is called the crawl reflex. The root reflex is elicited when the cheek is stroked. Note how the infant turns his head toward that stimulus. And the suck reflex can be easily noted when a finger is placed in the baby's mouth. The infant should begin to display sucking movements of the mouth. 